Hey, Mortgage Coach community, Dave Savage here, and today I have Garth Bram as my guest. What's up, Garth? Yeah, hello, Dave. How are you? I'm great. I, uh, I wish we were together having this interview. I, I can't remember where we last did a knee-to-knee -knee interview. Was that Sales Mastery? It was at Sales Mastery, and you invited me to your hotel room. So I'm perfectly fine with this video conferencing. I think that is a totally appropriate way to handle this. So rather than doing it in your hotel room during sales mastery, if you remember correctly. Yeah, well, I, I know we're going to be in the same place somewhere soon, and I'll get yeah. you back up to my suite for round two. So, do. All right. So, so folks, you know, I'm always trying to help referral-based local lenders and loan officers um, yeah. execute better, close more loans, do it more profitably. And I can't think of anybody better than Garth Graham with Stratmore to talk about that. So, so guards, if you don't mind, give us some takeaways from uh, MBA Tech this year. You know, that was last week. You were one of the keynote speakers. Yeah. What do you think referral-based lenders and loan officers need to know? Yeah, so there were, there were a number of things that were pretty interesting. I, I kicked it off on a, on a Sunday evening and we had pretty good attendance. So there was an awful lot of excitement around the MBA Tech. I think it helped having it in Detroit, Michigan, of course, the land of Quicken. We could actually see Quicken right from outside the window. Uh, Quicken had a nice, uh, you know, uh, reception one evening. So that, that created certainly some buzz around it. I will happily uh, or unhappily report to you, it also was snowing, which, you know, if you can go somewhere in the United States of America and get snow in April, that's always a nice thing at a conference. So, you know, that that part was unwelcome. But we had it was pretty well attended on Sunday. And uh, the big message that I was really about was for vendors – how they should, what they should think about when they're pitching, and for lenders, what they should think about when they're picking. Because that really, when you go to a conference, there's two things going on, um, you know, there to learn, but there's certainly from a vendor, it's a pitch, and from a lender, it's a pick. And really, both of them, you know, come down to a few things that I write about in an article, you know, the five tips before you invest in digital solutions. But you ought to have an ROI, and you ought to know what you're getting out of it, and you ought to be able to focus on the consumer. So it's a number of things I know that you talk about on this channel very frequently, Dave. Well, I, I love that because I, I think you know, whether you're watching this, you're a loan officer, you're a branch manager, you're a regional leader, your C-suite who's making the decision for your platform, those are critical things. And I, I think we're now at a point in our industry by 2020 that most top lenders and loan officers will have a, you know, they'll have a digital mortgage platform. And the question is, are they going to use it and leverage it in a way that gives them a competitive advantage and in a way that increases production and reduces or increases profit? Yeah. So what, what are, you know, what are some of the things? And let's, let's kind of focus, you know, if you could, when you answer this, we got loan officers who need to use it and we have mm -hmm. C-suite to deploy it in a way that it gets used. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that need to be considered? Just give us some highlights. Yeah, so I think one of the big ones that I did when I mentioned on my Sunday, which, you know, I think you've got a copy of the presentation that I did at MBA Tech. So, heck, you people get to experience a mini version of it without having to go to snowy Detroit. But um, one of the things I, I stress is that you need to focus on making high producers even more productive. Because 40% of the loan originators in our industry do 80% of the volume. So you certainly need to do something to make them even more productive. And it needs to be valuable and usable. Technology solutions need to be valuable and usable for that segment of people. The great part is, is the people who've already proven that they can develop relationships, they've got experience in the industry, they have referral sources, they build their business over time, they're professionals and provide high value to the customers. They certainly are the ones that productivity tools ought to be targeted to, because they're the ones that are gonna, if they use it, they'll bring the volume in. So, you know, one of the messages that I have there is focus on those people, those 40% who are high productive users in our industry. Um, or those that are, you know, aspiring and showing that they can gain that sort of level of production because they're the ones that are really uh, drive adoption ultimately. So that was one big one. Focus on the big users, at least from it, when you come into the, uh, when you're focused on sales. So there was a lot for me to unpack there. So one, I want to make sure everybody on this knows that both Garth's um, PowerPoint 
and the article he's referencing is down below. So you're watching this on YouTube. There'll be a little description below. We'll put links to those, as well as I recently read an article that you guys did at Stratmore on Amazon coming into the space. So those are going to be below. Um, I, I also want to unpack because, you know, at Mortgage Coach, we've got, you know, almost a third of the nation's top 1% using uh -huh. our platform. And I, I, I love what you just said. You've got to deploy technology and you've got to resource that in a way that your best will use it. And, and, and that is the best way to also serve your, your bottom tier and your middle tier is driving those into those behaviors. What are, what are some of the things from a technology perspective that you see that are commonalities among that top 40% that's doing 80%? You know, just one, two, three things that you think are sure. skills and traits of the best. Well, so, so here's one of the things that I would say if you're deploying technology, so if you're in the picking or, uh, you know, if you're a vendor, if you're pitching, but one of the key things is that you need to focus on people, process, and product. So you can pick a product and implement and use it. And if you do not think through how to make the people use it and the impact on the consumer and what your process is to effectively use it, you will be far less successful. So I, I give you credit, Dave, because frankly, this, this video channel is about the people part. What do you do and how do you do things to enable you to use this technology more effectively? You're obviously a believer because you don't just say, here's mortgage coach, go use it and I'll send you an invoice. You say, here's the way people use it, here's the best practices, but I will challenge producers have got to be prepared in digital that they're gonna have to change the process. They're gonna have to train their people they're going to have to ask their, one -off, their LOAs to do different things than they've done in the past to get them to use the various digital technologies, whether it's mortgage coach or a digital point of sale or whatever it might be. It's a people process and product change management process. I love that. And I, I couldn't agree more. And our strategy is, hey, we have this amazing community of the best. Let's connect that community. You know, we've got our Facebook group, you know, join that if you're a mortgage professional. We've got our YouTube channel. And then our whole strategy is now let's create communities within lenders where, you know, there's inspirational teaching and learning. So, so Garth, let's, let's transition just quickly because I, I really think by 2020, the referral-based local lender needs to execute. I mean, it's, it's no longer like a competitive advantage. It's like you're not going to have customers for life if you do not execute this post 2020, um, what do you think, you know, what are your thoughts on Amazon? Are they, are they coming? Um, yes, no. And, you know, let's just do a quick couple thoughts on what should the local lender do if you knew Amazon was coming into the space? Thoughts? Sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think the, this, it, let's just describe Amazon as a potential heavily self source type model. Right, so you can go online like an Amazon's value proposition is for everything else. You do your own research, you pick your product, you hit the submit button and it shows up. Well, a mortgage is very different, especially in the purchase segment. And the reason I say this is, you know, we're going into a market where it's gonna be 25% refinance overall. We're leaving a market that was 50 and only a few years ago was 75. And refinance borrowers are typically more likely to be in this sort of self-service or in the centralized consumer direct model. This does not mean you can't do that in a purchase, but only 20% of purchase loans are done through consumer direct type channels where it's over 50% of refinance. So we are certainly, we're seeing these centralized self-service oriented digital solutions beginning to capture market share, but they still are only getting two out of 10 purchase transactions. So the, the interesting thing for me is how would Amazon, even as skillful as they are, generate value in a purchase transaction where you're still gonna have things like the realtor saying, I need to change the pre-approval letter yet again. I need help talking to the borrower about why renting is not maybe not the best financial transaction. I know you've got some solutions in Mortgage Coach around that. There's a lot of human things in there in purchase that make it much harder 
and it is in refinance. So Amazon may be coming to the market with a boatload of skills, but they're coming into a market that's much tougher for the type of self-service transactions that they're likely to contemplate. Yeah, no, no doubt. I completely believe that the future of the smart, you know, who's executing well, local lender, when it comes to purchase, is is in a is in a strong strategic position. But I, I also believe, because let's face it, it's not just Quicken. You know, I'm not going to mention names, but there are other lenders that have multiple channels that are leveraging technology well that are excep- doing exceptionally well in the purchase market. And so I think that, you know, the, the modern referral-based loan officer needs to use their CRM, needs to use their point-of-sale solutions. They need to use Mortgage Coach to be a coach and advisor to the borrower. Um, how, how much do you think that that has changed over the past few years? You know, the fact that you could get away with not using a CRM and still being at a certain level of success. How much has yeah. that changed? Yeah, so I think there's a couple things going on. The market dynamic has changed. A CRM now needs to be purchase ready. It needs to be purchase centric, which means you need to be able to handle long nurture over a long period of time. Uh, you know, the borrower, especially depending on what area you are with inventory challenges, might be in the market for months. And you need to be having a value added relationship to them, nurturing them, providing them consistent information, always being there and ready to help them as they're going through this buy cycle. So, one, once again, is the purchase market is something you got to focus on. Um, the second part is a key part of what Amazon might do or all of these digital tools will begin to do is create some transparency around the process. Because that's really at the core, if you get into what borrowers want, they want transparency. So if the loan's in process, they want status. If they're, if they're shopping, they want to know what the rate is, which really means they're, or they need to know what the payments are, can they afford it, et cetera. So a lot of your tools really help them address it. But I do think loan officers are going to begin to, and one of the big competitive threats may be from a Amazon is it may create yet even more transparency around rate. So you're going to need tools that enable you to show the cost of a loan, total cost of analysis, the rates, the payments, after tax payment, should you be renting, all of those types of things, transparency is going to be a key. I didn't go that long, Dave. Come on. Yeah, no, you you were great. So mortgage coach community, a couple things. If you have more questions for Garth, post them below. This will be in Facebook, LinkedIn. If you got a takeaway like this, share it with your mortgage friends. Um, My message is to the C-suite, you know, not only do you need to invest fast and like never before, make good decisions but you need to make those decisions and you need to invest in training, you know? Uh, and, and it's not like a one quarter initiative, whether you're rolling out a CRM, point of sale or a mortgage coach, you know, it's a multiple year commitment where you need to roll it out thoughtfully. You need to, the training behind the rollout is incredibly important and make sure you invest in that. And then for every referral based loan officer that's listening to this, the days are over. I mean, if, if you didn't use technology, and by the way, you have a team. So I recommend if you have a team, you know, get your team involved in implementing it. You don't have to be the one that puts all the information in mortgage coach, does everything in your CRM. Use your team to leverage your technology at an incredibly high level. Garth, any last words of wisdom or call to action to folks on today's call? Yeah, and it, once again, we, we, it still comes down to the same sort of three things. Um, and if you're going to implement change um, and you're going to change your business, it is people. You just mentioned loan officer systems, leveraging your team, making sure you're all on the same page, engaging with the community of like-minded people. It's the process. Think through all the steps that are going to be necessary to be successful. And it's picking, you know, and engaging and using the right technology product. I would strongly say saying, I don't need to change is the easiest way to probably get run over by the change that's coming. It's really managing the change across those dimensions, people, process, and product that I think is the key. Yeah, well, my my final thoughts are, I do think it's important, no, not important, it's essential that the CDC looks at the ROI of different technology, but I'm gonna push that down to a branch manager 
to a loan officer, do your own ROI analysis. You know, we're, I'm proud of our team. We've rolled out an online ROI analysis to say, hey, what is, what is the value of improving my conversion using mortgage codes, using CRM? And it's a lot. And also the biggest miss is I, I can't believe how many loans, you know, annually referral-based loan officers leave from their past customer database. You guys aren't doing annual reviews. Your most loan officers are leaving half of their past customer database out there for other lenders because you're not leveraging technology. So, so yeah, C-suite, do your ROI analysis. Loan officers, do your own ROI analysis to really build that why you should be implementing technology better. Garth, super grateful for you, brother. Looking forward right. to getting you in my suite soon. And remember, folks, there's links down below to, you know, incredible content from Stratmore. Uh, make sure you follow them. Make sure you get on the remaining list. It's a, it's a gold mine of insights and value. Thanks, Garth. Thank you.